I guarantee you, if you do such and such, then such and such is going to be the result. How can a person guarantee or how can something be guaranteed, right, that it it shall take place? Because it's already happened. This is the reason why they can say this shall happen or this shall take place, right? It's not a promise of what's going to happen, but it's a guarantee of what's already taken place. Let's talk about it. Yo, good morning. Happy Tuesday, Testify Tuesday to you. Please like this video, share this video on all your platforms, right? Make sure that you like this video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that bell notification so that you're always notified whenever I release or upload a video. You dig? Now that that's out the way, let's get into the topic on today, which is shall. When we say shall and we hear the word shall or read the word shall, a lot of times that's taken as to come, right? Something is going to happen, right? Um, but my understanding, according to spirit, is that shall is not something that's going to take place at some point in the future. Shall is something that has already taken place. <laughs> Thus, the ability with a surety and certainty to say shall. This shall happen. I shall such and such. The only way that we can use shall correctly is when we know that such thing that we're talking about or expounding on has already taken place. That's how we know that it shall happen because shall has already happened. When God says, I shall do so-and-so, he's already done it. He's just waiting for us to catch up to his word. <laughs> Rewind. Let me say that one more time for the people in the back that didn't hear me too clearly. God has already spoken when he says, I shall. He's just waiting for us to catch up to his word. <laughs> yeah, see, when we get in place to where we catch up to what God has already said, then that's when we'll be walking directly in the blessing in the presence. The blessing is waiting for us to catch up to it. God has already spoken, right? He says, where there are two, me and somebody else, me and you that's watching this video, where there are two or three, gather in my name. There I shall be, right? There I shall be. It's a promise. It's a guarantee of what? Of something to come? No, it's a promise and a guarantee of what has already taken place. When two or three gather in my name, I shall be in the midst, right? So how can we understand that God shall be in the midst of two or three if it has not already taken place? How could he give us such a guarantee? How could he speak such a guarantee if it's something that hadn't already happened already? If he's already in me and I'm bringing him with me and me and you connect as brother and sister of Christ in Christ and you bringing him with you, then guess what? When we come together, he's going to be in the midst. There is no Maybe, hopefully, no, no, no. If I'm bringing him with me and I'm bringing him with me because he's in me and you bringing him with you, then when we connect, he is already in the midst of us. You dig? That's how we come together and you bring Jesus, I bring Jesus. There's no way Jesus cannot be in the midst of us when we come together because that's his word. Think about that, right? God says, 
if you do this, then I'll do this. Now there's an if attached to that. There's a <laughs> there's something that we have to do. But when he says, I shall, it's already happened. Lord, help us catch up to your blessing. Help us catch up to your word that you've already spoken out of your mouth. Help us catch up to what has already taken place so we can understand that your word is totally your word. Accurate in its depiction and detail and what you have set it out to do because you've already said that it's not going to return unto you void. Every word that you've spoken, God, it will never return unfulfilled unto you. So help us catch up to your word. Now the scripture is coming out of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, starting at the third verse down through the sixth verse. You dig? Deuteronomy 28, three through six. And it reads as thus. Blessed shalt thou be in the city and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body and blessed shall be the fruit of thy ground and the fruit of thy cattle and of thy kind, meaning goats, and of thy flocks of sheep. Blessed shall be the basket and thy store. In verse six, blessed shall be, blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in and blessed shalt thou be when thou goest out. You dig? Deuteronomy 28, three through six. So we're talking about increase, right? We're talking about increase here, but we're already blessed with these things. We just need to walk in it, catch up to it. You know what I'm saying? Your blessing is already there waiting on you. Why? Because God has already decreed it. He said, it shall be, you shall be this. When you go in and when you go out, your seed of your body shall be this. the, the, the cattle, that you that you care for and you tend to shall be this these things has already happened why are we not walking in them already walk when you go into a room you already blessed what you holding your head down for what you acting like you know you're not that dude or that woman why are you acting like you'd less than you're already blessed it's already happened no matter where you go in or where you go out, it's on you. So walk like it is. You dig? Don't deny it. It is what it is. <laughs> Everything you put your hand to is blessed. The basket and the store, your businesses is blessed, right? The love, the joy, the peace, the kindness, the long suffering, um, you know, the, the temperance, the fruit of your body, the fruit of the spirit is blessed, right? Your children are blessed. <laughs> you dig? The things that you put your hand to, that you produce, you care for, is blessed. So act like it. Walk in the blessing. It's already happened. We just have to catch up to it. Come on, y'all. Catch up to your blessing, you dig? Listen, to those that believe God has already given us the blessing. He's already given us a promise in his word. It's already in us. We just got to catch up to it. You did? The blessing is already in us. We just got to catch up to it. So then riddle me this. If the blessing is already in us, right? We already have it. We just got to catch up to it. Then why do we speak against the blessing? Why do we why do we talk down against the blessing? You did instead of just saying what God says. And that's all we're doing. We're repeating what God says that we are. We're blessed when we go in. We're blessed when we go out. We're blessed whatever our hands touch. Our body is blessed. The fruit of our body is blessed. So why do we speak against the blessing? Right. 
talk against the blessing, complain about the blessing, whether it's whether we haven't caught up to it fast enough or whether it's not efficient enough or big enough or whatever. We find something wrong with the blessing, but yet how could something be wrong with the blessing when it's a blessing? <laughs> you did. It's something that you didn't know you had before it was revealed to you that you already have it. How could something be wrong with that? <laughs> so let us not speak down upon, speak against, um, tear down or curse the blessing that's already in us. But let's speak it forth. Let's, let's pray that God reveals it to us, right? As the deeper we go, the more he reveals. And then let's thank him and praise him for the blessing. Because that's what it is. It's a blessing, right? Don't speak down or don't curse. Don't, don't take lightly what God has put in you and put in me. Let's thank him for it. Let's be um, respectful of the blessing. Let's be exuberant about the blessing, excited about it. Why would you speak down on something that God has already given you, has already done in your life? Again, let's catch up to the blessing. Then we won't have time to speak down upon it, speak bad about it, because we'll just see it as increase. We'll see it as, oh my God, thank you, Lord. I didn't see it before, or I didn't know I had it, but now that you've revealed it to me, now that you've enlightened me, now that you've, you've taken me deeper, you've opened my eyes, you've taken the scales off my eyes and I see it now, God. Then we can start glorifying God because of we know that nothing he does is with evil intent, but everything he does is for our increase. It's for our blessing, right? You shall be. So walk in it. Walk like you already have it because you do already have it and I already have it. You dig? So as we walk like we already have it, seeing it and believing it, hearing it and speaking it, then it shall be because it is. Be blessed on today. Your man, LeVon, just wanted to encourage you on this Testify Tuesday and testify to someone. Share your testimony about what God has done already and what you expect him yet to do. Your man, LeVon, be blessed. Remember, LaMelly E, love, uplift, motivate, to inspire, to learn, laugh, encourage, and enlighten. Because LaMelly E represents the whole United States, you dig? LaMelly E represents the whole United States. So let's show love and light. Remember to like this video, share this video, and I'll see you in the next video.